the impossible would be to look at pain as a gift. But I want to give you some tools here. Because you know what? The only way that we get this strength, you know, some of you are wondering, how did this happen? You see, you're like, man, you got, you got 820 and STTs. How the heck did you write a book? You know what I mean? Like, I know some of you are like, that doesn't make sense. The impossible can happen. You know what I mean? And you know what happens through having, I have a ghostwriter. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, you got to get help from community. You, like, here. Family, this is great. But when you go back home, you got to have more community, which a lot of you have. That's one way. Another way is we need to memorize our Bible, not just go, mm -hmm, that's nice, I like that. You know, like, <laughs> like, I'm saying memorize your Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11. For God knows well the plans he has for us, says the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for all. Plans to give us a future full of hope. John 10, 10, the thief came to steal, to slaughter, and destroy. But Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Right? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isaiah 40.31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on eagles with wings. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verse 4 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and always acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Psalm 37.4, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you a heart's desire. <laughs> John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that anyone who believes in him will not die. But will live forever. Would any of you give your son? Hope you don't have one yet. But, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. I, I love you either way. But bottom line is. Would you give up your son for any? I wouldn't give up my son or my daughter for anyone. That's how much he loves us. The thing we need to do is we, we need to learn our, we need to know our word. Matthew 4, 4 says this. We don't live on bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Here comes my wife. Give it up for her. Here she comes. We, first community, second, we got to know our word. How many of you know your Bible? You memorize the word. You're like, that doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you why it matters. You want me to tell you why it matters? Some of you are like, I'm strong. I'm going to tell you why it matters. Because you know what? There's going to be a time in your life you want to do something wrong. There's going to be a time in your life you're going to struggle. And whatever's on your brain, whatever's on your mind, you will do. That's why what we listen to, how we talk, the Bible says, no foul language shall come out of your mouth, but only language used to benefit others, to impart grace on those who hear it. Let me tell you something. The key to life is what you eat, meaning what you learn, what you spend time with is who we are. So if we don't know our word, if we don't really know it, guess what happens? How many of you go in the, go in the car and you turn on the music, bad or good songs, whatever it is, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? Someone come up and sing one of these songs. I mean, like, why MTA? You know, like, you know what I mean? Don't lie. You know you're singing it when no one's around. Don't lie now. Sweet Caroline. Do, do, do. This guy said, like, yeah, me. We memorize sweet Caroline. You know what I mean? Like, think about that for a second. But we, we got we to gotta know our word. You know why people end up having these thoughts that beat them up to the point where it becomes so harmful to themselves? I guess so many. I travel all across the country and all the pain out there that I see. Wonder why? Because the word, the word gets us back focused. Helps us to know we're beautiful. Helps us to know we can do the impossible. It helps us to know that we're important. Help us, helps us to know that when temptation comes, we can get through it. Helps us to know that we have a God that loves us and is passionate about us. And you know what? That's number two. Number three, when I came to Christ when I was 17 years old, there's something I did. Now, I'm not saying it was the right way. I was young, so I was doing it the wrong way. But when I first came to Christ, I had this priest in my life, Father Larry. And uh, he, I didn't like him. I couldn't stand him. And then all of a sudden, I, I ended up liking him because my heart totally changed. 
And I came to Christ, and right after I came to Christ, no lie, I went to an all-boys school. I, the Monday after I came to Christ, after this, like, weekend, I went to school, and I'd put kids in headlocks, right? And take them to church. Father, I filled up the church. You know, like, truth, right? truth. Ask him, he'll tell you, right? Now, I'm not suggesting to do that. I know, yeah, new evangelism, this is great. You know what I mean? Like, all right, you know, like, it's not a good thing to do. I'm not promoting it. You're my, he says beat people up, you know, like, you know, like, that's not what I'm saying. But it was so on my heart. So I ended up starting going to daily mass. You're like, well, I live three miles, and my mom goes to work early. I had a kid who used to walk to church three miles in my youth group. He'd walk. Go to daily mass. I'm telling you, it will strengthen you. We are what we eat. We are what we spend time with. You're like, well, they'll think I'm corny. You know, like, <laughs> I'm the mass person. I'll tell you what, you think I'm corny? You, you got to believe in who you are. You, you know why? Because when you do the impossible, who's going to daily mass? Oh, you're like, me, I am. You know, like, that's awesome you are, but some others aren't. The other thing for the tools to encourage you. And these are things I want you to practice this week, which all of you go daily mass, you know, but I really want you to challenge yourself that when you go back home, you'll try to do the same. I want you to challenge yourself to do the impossible, to start memorizing. Memorize, I'll challenge you five scriptures this week. Memorize them. Five. Five. Sweet Caroline. You know what I mean? Like, you can memorize that. I ask you, and I'm going to tell you why after I'm done with the fourth one. I'm going to tell you this is the key. Silence. This world, man, will destroy us with its noise. We'll do things I'm like, why did I do that? Because there's so much noise. Oh, you just went and did it. Every day, start with 15 minutes saying nothing and saying, God, what are you speaking to my heart? Community. One. Two, memorize the word of God. Get in your brain thoughts of God and what he thinks of you and what we're called to act like. Three, daily mass. And four, spend time in silence. And you know what will happen to you? What will happen to you this? I can promise you, you'll still be striving to be perfect every day. And it will be a challenge and you'll be tempted. But you will know who you are. And you are that person that is going to do the impossible. Christ wants you to believe that you can do it. I know you might not. But if you know his word, you'll believe it. Go to daily mass. I'm telling you, it will strengthen you.